This is the 2022 Leaving Cert Higher Level Paper 1 Deferred Paper. And in part A here, we are given some information and I've labeled that there as V of 0 and V of 1. So they're asking us to create a linear function and they give us the linear function V of X equals AX plus B. So to create that, what we're going to do is sub in the information we know. So we know V of 0 and we know V of 1. So when we sub in 0 for x we end up finding that b is equal to 2506 and when we sub in v we end up being able to find out that a is equal to 228 so we take that a and b value and we sub it into the original and we get a nice little function for v of x in part two then we are asked to find a quadratic function. So again, we are given v of x equals cx squared plus dx plus f. Again, there's always more work when we're dealing with quadratics. And all we know is the first two values. So 2506 and 2734. So in order for me to establish that this is quadratic and find some sort of information about the rest of the visitors at different weeks, what I need to do is I need to actually create a quadratic sequence here. So we know that in a quadratic sequence, the second difference is constant. So I've decided my second difference is going to be 100. And I've basically built a sequence backwards from that information. So then what I do now that I have a V0, a V1, a V2, etc. I sub that information into my function. So V of 0, I end up finding F is 2506. I then sub in V of 1 and V of 2. And I find that I'm getting a little equation with a C and a D in it. Now I need to solve for C and D. So I'm going to use simultaneous equations to do that. So simultaneous equations is something that pops up very often and it is a skill that you really need to have in your arsenal every single time. And once we do our simultaneous equations there, we find the value of C, which is 50, and we find a value for D, which is 178. And we pop that information into the blank generic V of X formula that we were given. And we can go ahead and check the answer there as well if we want to double check ourselves, but it works. It did say at the start of this that there are um, an infinite amount of quadratic functions for this. That's because you needed to go and create your own. So your one might be a little bit different to mine. In the next part, then we're looking for an exponential function. So again, we are actually going to see what the formula is here in the question. It says V of X is equal to K multiplied by E to the power of PX. Again, you know V of 0, you know V of 1, and we use that information first. When I sub V of 0 in, I end up finding that K is equal to 2506, and when I sub in V of 1, I end up with a little equation. So I end up with E to the power of P equals 2734 over 2506. I actually can't solve this using the rules of indices. There's no rule that's going to help me to solve it. So that's where you convert to logs. And I've got the little conversion formula written out here for you. And I literally just change it and solve for P. So in part B then, this is a 10 marker question. And they are asking about distance, speed and time on Fred going to work. So I always write down my distance, speed, time triangle. I think it's really important to have that close by. And what we're figuring out is we need the average speed on his way home. Now we have lots of information, but we need to know more about his home journey. So in order to calculate speed, I need distance over time. Now I know the distance home is 12 kilometers, but I don't know how long it's taking me. So when I look at the information given, I find I know it's time, his time to work. I know the overall time. So when I subtract them from each other, I can figure out his time to come home. So I then just calculate it using 12 over 33 over 50 and I get 18.2 kilometers per hour. This is a really quick one here. So just by reading the information, when it's rounded to the nearest whole number, once it hits 47.5, it'll round up to 48. In part two here, you're literally just representing 115.5 in terms of the speed formula, where you have a D and a T for distance and time. The next one now could cause a little bit of confusion, to be fair. So they're 
extending the information to another 20 minutes later and they're giving us the ability to find some of that information there so we know that the speed and we're able to find the distance but we need to incorporate the d and the t value from the previous part so think of d as the last distance and the 40 is the new distance so d plus 40 all together and t as the last time and the third of an hour is the new time and we add them together so that's how we create that equation there and of course a little bit of algebra here in the very last part so essentially we're solving for x here so go and get rid of your fraction multiply across by 117.5 that'll cancel that out and you just start by working away now normally i'd be a big advocate for getting rid of the fraction every time we see one but in this case i noticed that the x value is in both of those uh, fractions that contain 60 so when i combined them on the left hand side it worked out fine in the end i got x is equal to 36 and I use that information to find another bit of distance and then I added them together. Make sure you subscribe for more maths videos.